my dear people of Southern Cameroon, this is a very grave day. It is a grave day because the tidings are not good. It is a grave day because there is so much that is beginning to show just how a good lot of us intend to define the struggle for the liberation of our homeland. My dear people of Southern Cameroon, we have all heard the news. We are all out. We are all disturbed. We are all shaken to the roots because the enemy is permanently at work. Yes, right now we are all crying everywhere like terrified cops because the enemy has hit us where it hurts most. I like to use this opportunity to recall that two communications back, I drew our attention to the fact that La République du Cameroon was doing everything to infiltrate even the ranks of the cabinet. And that once that is done, they are going to be able to terrorize us, to try to break this revolution from the top. Instead, I had stones being thrown at me. But I like to tell all of us this day, this moment, that the time now is not for us to engage in the blame game, because that is exactly what La Republic expects. We have all read the good book. What does the good book tell us? What does the Bible tell us? That when the devil wants to destroy a family, what do they do? They go for the strong man, because once they hit the strong man, they know that the sheep will be scattered all over the place and will be lost in total confusion. And in that confusion, what is going to happen? The enemy will triumph. Since the news broke out yesterday that our interim president and a good number of people in his, in his cabinet have been arrested, a good lot of us immediately went to the rampage doing what we know how to do best, launching accusations and counter accusations casting conspiracy theories rather than coming together, rather than telling ourselves that this is the moment more than ever before, that we sink our differences, that we forget some of those evil things that struggle more to set us apart and come together like one person to try first of all to rescue our leaders before we begin asking questions. It's an unfortunate situation, but let me say this and say it very clearly that our interim president, Sisi Kwayuktabe, Mr. Tassan Wilfred, and all the other people, Banfo Ngalamfo, wherever they are, right now, they should be very disappointed at us. They should be very disturbed at us. They should be very frustrated because they will be telling themselves that it means if something really happened to them, definitely, and that it is the ultimate price that they were called upon to pay, it will mean perhaps this revolution will be completely disoriented and shaken to the point where we will not be able to pick up the pieces. My dear people of Southern Cameroons, this is the moment more than ever before for all of us, wherever we are, to rise on our feet and tell the world and tell La République du Cameroon and tell everyone that still needs to hear that the people of Southern Cameroons will never be stopped, that this revolution has only one bus stop and that bus stop is Boya. This is the time more than ever before that we have to prove to our leaders that we, the people, can rise up at any given moment to fill the gap wherever there is, whenever there is any. My dear people of Southern Cameroon, on the 17th of January, in the year of our Lord 2017, when this kind of situation happened, when Yaoundé fell on Baris and Congo, Felix Agbabala, and uh, Fontem Neba, who were the leaders of the consortium, the organization that was calling the shots at the time. What did I do? I was the one lone man standing in La Republique du Cameroon in Yaoundé, where I could have access to do something. And what did I do? I answered that very vital 3 a.m. call. I answered that call by immediately making other calls to those that could be available. And what did we do? We sat up, we worked through the night, such that by the time it was 6 a.m., the entire world rose up to find Comrade Tapang Ivor and Magbara comfortably seated on the driver's seat, and the revolution continued unabated. 
my dear brothers and sisters, this is the moment that we have to prove to the world more than ever before that we shall not be stopped, not by anyone at all. So right now, we are beginning to get a lot of information coming in. I know the latest one a good lot of us have had is that our leaders have been arrested by the Department of State Security, the DSS, in the federal uh, capital, Abuja, in Nigeria, and that they are being questioned for expired papers and not for political reasons. I think at face value, this seems plausible and interesting, and we should all go to sleep, that of course, they are definitely going to, to release them the next day, especially as among them, we have Comrade Tassang, we have uh, Comrade Fongalam for we have even Comrade Nalova and Comrade Eyambe Elias, who are refugees, and who definitely all have refugee status in Nigeria. But folks, let me tell us one thing. We have to be very careful. Anytime the enemy takes one little step, it is to see what will happen. It is to see what we will do. It is to test the grounds to see how far we can go. Let me call our attention to the fact that this is the time that each and every one of us on planet Earth, whether you are in Manila, whether you are in South Africa, whether you are in Ottawa, whether you are in Washington, D.C., whether you are even in Bamenda or in Boya, in Kumba, in Ekondo Titi or wherever, we must all rise like one man and tell the world that none of us shall go to sleep when any of our leaders has been touched. Right now, the observation is clear. If they say it is because of documents, then the authorities of Nigeria should definitely be on their way to sending People who don't have documents out of their country, they should be deported. And where do you deport people in your country who don't have documents? If you identify their countries, you will deport them to their countries of origin. We all understand what this means. Fellow Southern Cameroonians, ladies and gentlemen, if it is with your mouth that you can sing the song that will motivate people to fill the streets of Southern Cameroons like we saw it on the 22nd of October 2017, do it. If it is with your hands that you will beat the drums that will motivate everyone to leave their houses and fill the streets, begin to beat that drum. If at all it is with your legs that you will run from door to door and, ask, and be asking people to come out and fill the streets because we have to tell Yaoundé that this will not happen and go unpunished, then begin to do it. By every means, be involved. By every means, do something. And for those of us who are away from ground zero, every one of us must move now. Whether it is snowing, whether it is the wild hamatan, what, I don't care to know whatever conditions you are in. I don't care to know whatever atmospheric conditions you are battling with right now. The time is now to invade all Nigerian embassies and high commissions across the world. We must send a message to the federal government in Nigeria that you can't fool around with our leaders. Yes, the time is now to do it. This is the moment, more than ever before, that we must sink our differences, that we must stop the blame game, that we must all know that if one person is touched, we are all touched. This is when all for one and one for all makes a meaning. Let me remind us of the fine African proverbs that we know and that we are ignoring. We must rise to the occasion to prove that we are Africans and that we live by our values. Chinua Achebe, in, his most, in one of his most celebrated books, said, whenever we hear the hawk has descended to pick the chicks, we must first of all run out there and make sure we chase away the hawk before we go around blaming the mother hen for wandering too long or too far into the forest. My dear brothers and sisters, have we forgotten that Fox Russell, that very delicate and stupid fox that captured this wonderful cock in the nuns priest tale in Chaucer's most celebrated the Canterbury Tales. When Fox Russell captured Chanticleer, we all recall that what caused the fox, that almighty fox, to vomit back Chanticleer the fastest possible was the commotion caused by all kind of objects, all the hens, all kind of objects, everyone, even the humans present, that is what resulted to it. 
when the devil hits and attacks, he is watching to see if we will go crying around like terrified cops, to see if we know our right, if we will rise up like Elijah did in the book of Kings in the Bible. I said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. If we go crying, the devil celebrates. But when we rise like one man and begin to tear the devil out of the way, the devil runs away. Yes, because the devil likes to hear hard language. That is what sends him running. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stop the blame game. Let us put it behind us. In a struggle like the one we are in now, this is the most defining moment. This is the time when we know all the fine brains in southern Cameroon will come together, will forget that they are Morisk, will forget that they are SCYL, will forget that they are AGC, will forget that they are ROA, that they are Consortium, that they are SCNC, will forget that they are whatsoever. They will only recall that they all are part of this interim government and that we must come together and that the time for us to come together really is now and show the world that though we quarrel in our house, no one should by any means dare us. No one should by any means mess up with us. So by this clarion call, I'm shouting at all of us on Ground Zero to come out of our shelves, to come out. Southern Cameroons must be grounded. Southern Cameroons must be grounded. Life must come to a standstill until this wickedness has been put to an end. Life must come to a standstill until Yaoundé understands that once they cross the red line, we will not take it anymore. My dear brothers and sisters of Southern Cameroons, I'm so packed with emotion, and I know that even some of us are beginning to feel ashamed of ourselves, that at this specific moment, instead of coming together, we are there propagating wasteful and evil messages. And let me tell each and every one of us, you who are sitting behind your keyboard right now and sending out those hate messages, know that if anything were to happen to our leaders, their blood will be on your hands. You who are taking your phone to call someone to say, oh, I'm celebrating because this has happened. My opponents are out of the way. Know that even the blood of those who have already died will be on your hands. This is a time where we all sink our differences. This is the moment where we all rise like one man and tell the whole wide world that the Southern Cameroons shall be free by hook or by crook, by power or by peace. The Southern Cameroons will be free and that no one will mess around with any of our leaders and go away with it. I am so, so, so emotionally carried away. That is why you can see me even talking at some points with trembles. This is exactly what has never happened to me, that I feel generally composed when I talk to us. But my dear brothers and sisters, we must know that you cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. This is what George Mayer says, and this is effectively true. Let us be positive. Let us continue to be positive and positive alone. And trust me, we will get to the end. We must resist discouragement because the greatest risk in, in life is to take no risk. Do you want to exit this world without a major achievement attached to your name? If your answer is yes, take no risk. But if your answer is no, arise now and do what you are supposed to do. We must come together. We must act now. And we must send a sound, clear, and very, very distinguished message to La Republic, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and to the world at large. God is with us.